Hello and welcome to Film Companion South. In this episode, we're going to be talking about T.J. Nyanavil's Jai Bheem, which stars Surya, Manikandan, Licha Mojos, and Rajisha Vijayan. Now, if you are one of those kinds who thinks that a good story and good intentions automatically make for a good movie, if you are a Samudrakani as a director fan, I'm a fan of Samudrakani, the actor, not the director. So, if you are one of these people, please go watch Jai Bheem. Do not watch the rest of this review. You're going to automatically like this movie. Now, for the rest of us, let us talk about what kind of movie this is. Jai Bheem is what I call a crying baby movie. Now, what this means is that there is a shot of a pregnant mother being led away savagely by the police. She's a tribal woman. She belongs to the Irula tribe and she's being savagely led away by the police. Now, the BGM is this high, okay? And the shaky camera is amping up the, the hysteria even more. It's like make, if the BGM is like this, the camera is here, the scene is already here. And then the mother is, her face is terrified tears are streaking down her cheeks and all that and she's crying and then the director decides all this is not enough you still have to take the camera back to the baby that is left crying on the street so that the audience's sympathy can be amplified to the level of the bgm and of the camera work this is what i call a crying baby movie and that's what this is i mean this is a movie that takes this crying baby concept to a new level when a man is arrested because he has just bought toys for his young little child and and you know when he's led away by the police the wheels of the police jeep crush those toys oh my god the tragedy i'm sorry but this is the kind of thing that makes you feel why do you have to amplify everything so much why don't you rely on the emotions inherent in the subject of the story in the people in the story i mean why do you have to add all this extra sauce now this is not a subtle movie you know that because of the scenes i just described this is also the kind of movie where a man accepts bribe and you see the money going right into his pocket because we don't know how bribes work see but the story happens in 1990 in Virpuram and at least the initial portions are engaging because they show us the lives of the Irula tribe. Mostly these portions work beautifully because of the two actors who are paired together. Mani Kantan, one of the most honest faces on screen on the Tamil screen today and he's wonderful to watch as always. Now he plays an Irula tribesman and his wife is played by Lee Jamal Jose who's also wonderful in her many 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 movies but here I just wish both of them had been cast in a movie that had not been directed so hysterically. Now the inciting incident is when the Mani Kantan character gets accused of stealing Dealing jewels. Now, why does this happen? Because a lot of crimes in the area, they are pinned on the tribes, the Kirila tribes, the Kurava tribes, and these poor people are shot into jail because, you know, the upper caste, the moneyed caste, they get away easily. Now, again, as befits the subtlety of the movie, the people are basically divided into kind people and evil people. There's nobody in the middle. It's all kind or evil. Poor Rajisha Vijayan, who plays Teacher Rama, has a thankless role, but she's one of the kind people. And when she brings a bunch of tribes people to an, uh, an officer, He's a government officer. He says, Tribes na mala mala da irukano, yedika ka study certificate la. So he is evil, but the Irulas are kind because when they capture a baby rat, they let it go. Or when they capture a snake, they don't kill it, they let it go. And of course, the kindest person in the movie is Chandru, the centerpiece, the lawyer played by Surya, who takes on the case of this man, Mani Kantan, who has been captured. Actually, he's represented by his wife, the Lija Muljo's character. And Surya takes on this case. We know he will because he does this nice slow-mo jump that lawyers I think typically do in this place and then he has triumphant music following him and at the end everyone says basically you are God. The writing is ridiculously bad. You would expect a legal drama to have two sides evenly matched but everything is found out by Surya. The public prosecutor played by Guru Somasundaram seems a joke and his superior played by Rao Ramesh seems an even bigger joke. And even the way Chandru, that is Surya, finds out things, it's all so simplistic, so hurried. This is one of Surya's least involved performances. The whole movie seems to have been made in such a hurry. Another thing that must be said about the movie is that it plays like a mashup of Visarane and Kape Ranasingam. When we see the police torture in Visarane, we observe it from a documentarian distance, but we also feel it. And we also get a picture, the bigger picture of where this is all going towards. We get a sense of something larger. But here the scenes of police torture are just done to amplify the melodrama already existing melodrama in other words in Visarane they are trying to show reality here they are trying to attract our pity now I am not saying none of this happened these are based on real life events after all I am just talking about the way they are shown on screen in a way that screams literally into your ear and say look what happened and again I'm not saying that just because this is this kind of a subject it should be treated in this kind of way for example one of my favorite films of recent times Reena Mani Megalai's Madhati was treated in a very art film kind of way and that suits that movie that suits her sensibility that's the way she wants to make the movie and nothing can stop TJ Nyanavil from making the movie that he wants to make now he wants to make the kind of 
mainstream movie that assumes that the audience is all dumb and things have to be hammered into them with a big BGM score. He also thinks that the story is too serious and therefore it needs the comedy track of an MS Bhaskar. So fine, go ahead and make this movie, but make it nicely, make it properly. And now again, I'm going to give you another movie comparison when three people go missing. Now look at the way Nayata handled this, the way they go missing, the way these three people go missing. How long can we keep assuming that the Tamil audiences are dumb? I mean, look, this is a neighboring state. Yeah, come on. I mean, we can't be that big an IQ difference between between what they are consuming and what we are consuming, no? And even the writing, look at Chandru, right, as a lawyer. What is he? He's a noble lawyer. What is he? As in, like, is he a three-dimensional person? No, he's just a lawyer. Does he smoke? Does he drink? Does he have a mother? Does he have a wife? We know he lives alone, but what is he? Like, 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 does he play badminton with another friend and discuss his court cases with him? What is the three-dimensional picture of this person? Nothing. He is a lawyer and that is all he is. Again, all the good shots and the good scenes come with the tribal people. For example, there is a wonderful, wonderful scene where we are shown that uh, Lijo Moljo's character, she is offered a ride back home in her jeep. But because of the humiliation she has suffered, she opts to go by bus and then walk. Now, why is the scene so important? Because she chooses not to accept. In the earlier parts of the movie, we have been shown that these types of people, they expect to be treated a certain way. They, they accept everything that is thrown at them, all the humiliations that are thrown at them. But now Lee Jamal says, I will not accept it anymore. This is not okay. I am just going to do it my way. But apart from these few scenes, the movie is a total, total write-off. There is a scene where the Guru Somasindram character says this. He tells Chandru, Tribes, human rights in a case for a sympathy in a case, Jai Chit Lan Nanachikadinga. I wanted to tell somebody the same thing. Tribes, human rights, are being a part of it, they are being a part of it. In other words, like I said at the beginning, just because you have a good story and good intentions, it's not good cinema. That's the end of this JBM review. If you'd like to do subscribe to Film Companion South and see you soon at the movies.